Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be looking at warming up the respiratory system for both training and racing. So Andrew, when we talk about warmups in general, we know we wanna get our core temperature up, so that's gonna affect the muscles, uh, the heart's gonna be beating faster as well. Uh, everything is just gonna function better if we're warmed up well, but what I find, especially if we're going into um, maybe a, a race or a, comp a competitive event that's going to necessitate high intensity from the get-go, or if you're going into something like VO2 max intervals on a bike or running, uh, you really want to make sure your respiratory system is warmed up as well. But I find that sometimes uh, if I don't pay good attention to it, my respiratory system is not going to be as warm, let's say, or as ready as the other parts of my body. So how can we try and uh, do a better job of this in our warmups so that all our systems are on green and, and ready to fire. Yeah, I, and I would add to that that if you actually focus on a respiratory system, you actually benefit the other systems as well. We've mm. talked in the past about the numerous effects of changing levels of CO2 and the effects of breathing on the rest, the other systems, the cardiac system in, in particular, uh, but also uh, vasodilation of, of blood vessels at the periphery and the ability to provide more oxygen to those muscles. Mm -hmm. So if you include respiratory warmups as part of your general warmup, I think you're going to benefit the other systems as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, to talk about the respiratory system, there's a, there's a couple of things to think about what we're actually trying to warm up. We're trying to, um, when you're going to need the respiratory system to work at maximum efficiency, there's the full volume of the lungs that you want to have access to. So mm -hmm. part of the warm up needs to focus on maintaining maximum volume. So getting all the alveoli opened up and recruited and available. So some of those alveoli that haven't been working, especially if you've been lying down and resting or, or early in the morning, uh, when you get out of bed, some of those alveoli that actually collapse down and are actually not functional. So part of the world needs to incorporate the ability to open up those alveoli. So those are, those are deep, full functional breaths. The other part is, is actually warming up the muscles of respiration. So the main one being the diaphragm, uh, which is one of the largest slow twitch muscles in the body. But there's also the intercostal muscles that are gonna become vitally important, especially at high intensity when you're talking about VO2 max intervals, or if you're talking about an all out maximal effort racing, you're gonna to need to incorporate all of those muscles. So those muscles have to be warmed up. So we talk about the respiratory system in general, we're actually not talking about just the lungs, we're talking about the muscles that drive the motion that affects the lungs. So um, when you, when, when we incorporate respiratory warmups, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Um, the one is doing the sport itself. So whether you're running or riding a bike and, and actually focusing on the breathing aspects when you're doing your other warmups, when you're warming up your heart and you're warming up your muscles, you can, you can add the respiratory component to the, warm, the normal warm-up that you're already doing. There, there are some tools that, set, that people who do respiratory training, and we've talked about this before in, in, in other things, like Spiro Tiger or Breatheway, uh, devices that you can use to warm up your respiratory system without uh, stressing the body in any other way. So you can sit still and just warm up the respiratory system. Mm -hmm. But for most people who don't have access to those tools yet, um, we're talking about breathing techniques during your regular warm-up. So if you're preparing for an all-out 10K run or, or sprints running, you're gonna be doing some easy jogging to start to warm up the muscles and warm up the heart. And that's the time when you can change your respiratory to a respiratory focus to think about what would have what would allow the respiratory system to be fully developed. So to open up those alveoli, you really want to think about taking those deep, deep, deep breaths, as deep a breath as you can, fully functioning. Now, before you start to actually do it under running conditions, it actually might make sense to put your hands on your knees, unload the postural muscles, take mm -hmm. a full deep breath. And then as you start to jog, continue to try and move those same volumes of air, incorporating your diaphragm, slow breathing, ideally through your nose, because the, the nose allows for nitric oxide release and vasodilation, 
and also stimulates more of the diaphragmatic control. So making sure you're breathing with proper technique. Uh, and then the other aspect of that is that if you breathe slowly, it allows two things. One, it allows deep, deeper breathing and more incorporation of the alveoli, but it also allows for elevations of CO2. And when you raise your CO2, you get the peripheral effects of vasodilation, but you also get vasodilation and increased um, bronchodilation in the lungs. So mm -hmm. it's one of the ways of benefiting uh, respiratory warm-up is to actually focus on slower, deeper breathing uh, while you start your, your exercise. The other part of that warm-up is also developed is to make sure that you're coordinated and ready to move. So at some point, if you were gonna be doing maximal efforts where you're gonna incorporate maximal breathing intensities, then doing some uh, coordination efforts. So this is when you start to do a, a few shorter wind sprints or if you're doing sub-maximal efforts for 15 or 20 seconds. If you don't think about your breathing, your body will respond however it responds. It'll, it'll respond to the higher CO2 by breathing a little deeper and a little bit faster. But if you focus on taking good coordinated breaths, focusing on blow, exhaling all of the air out and breathing all as much air as you can back in, that coordination can carry over into the performance that you're about to do. So it's the cognitive idea of uh, warming up all the aspects of your respiratory system in preparation for performance. So that's volumes, uh, coordination, respiratory frequency, and at some point allowing higher CO2 levels to uh, improve vasodilation and bronchodilation to improve lung health and, and have everything uh, in the body uh, accessible for use during the highest performance that you're about to do. So yeah, you essentially want to explore all the different ways of breathing, if that's uh, if that's a thing, throughout your warm up, and might as well the higher frequency uh, breathing at some point help with a little bit of sympathetic activation, or or just you know, again just in addition to obviously you're pushing hard on your legs, or you're you know you're accelerating if you're running, uh, that's gonna you know fire some. Uh, bigger motor units, uh, more sympathetic activation, but we also know that by breathing faster, we can uh, have that impact on the autonomic nervous system. So that would also get us ready for a uh, high intensity effort, right? Absolutely. And this is where athletes really do have to, to um, focus on the timing of when these things are important. When, when do we want to be doing slow, deep, controlled breathing? When do we want to incorporate that very fast breathing into our warm? But we don't want to do it 20 minutes or 30 minutes before the event starts because that sympathetic drive will, will have come back down. So, so you need to time the higher frequency work closer to the beginning of the event so that it can have the positive effects that you want. Uh, and this really does now become a great uh, addition to regular training for you is, is how do we warm up the respiratory system so it, it best allows us to perform at, at, our, at our optimum level when we start and and it can be practiced every day and should be practiced every day as as part of our performance warm up uh, so that we so that the the timing and the feelings all benefit us to the maximum and uh, so my my simple suggestion is you start with slow deep breathing at rest and build into a slower warm up and then when, the, when you start to do some higher intensity efforts, that's when you're gonna work on the higher frequency, higher intensity, as close to the start of your event as you can, mm -hmm. recognizing that if you overdo that, if you overdo both the breathing or the intensity of a warm up, you can add fatigue to your system that you definitely don't want before you start. And so that, then it depends on the length of the event that you're planning or that you're warming up for. So be, do be very careful with any high intensity breathing, especially for events that are gonna require maximum efforts for a prolonged period of time. Mm, yeah, but I like the way you described it because it's what came to mind is an integrative approach to warm up in the sense that we're just thinking about how to integrate that respiratory system in our warm up. We're not changing much uh, on the regular warm up that everybody does, we're just, just putting that extra focus on the respiratory system so that 
uh, that as well can be taken care of. And like you said, in turn, benefit all the other systems. Absolutely. Yeah. Maximize, maximize the performance of all of the systems and, and recognizing that the respiratory system is the key contributor to both performance and to the performance of the other systems that we, that we typically focus on muscles and the, and the cardiac system. No, exactly. Now that was, that was great. And I think a, a nice and complete approach to, to warming up and integrating the, the respiratory system in that. So uh, for those who are still watching us here, thanks for watching. Leave us a like, uh, drop your question if, in the comments, uh, if you have any, of course, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.